Okay, April 24th, 2018. Uh, finally, I'm taking a little bit of time to do some uh, different weight testing on the valve. Uh, I've been fortifying the thrust block more, and that has definitely solidified things nicely. Um, and we have rain supposed to be coming tonight and tomorrow, so that should settle on the clay and help that clay settle in with the action of the ram pump constantly slapping it and basically helping it settle. Um, so uh, anyway, point of this video real quick, uh, I'm doing a, a weight test here where I've added some weights. Uh, I was running just with the bottom weight set on. Uh, that's been very reliable and steady. That's been producing about 0.88 gallons a minute at the test valve up top. And so now I've added a few more weights here and uh, it seems to run steady and reliable still with that on it. So I'm going to start it back up and go back up top and we'll test the flow and see if the flow is increased or decreased. Uh, in theory, increasing the stroke now that we have a good supply uh, should increase the water delivery. We'll find out if these weights help, hurt, or don't make any difference. You can see it's running pretty stable, and I'll zoom in on the sandpipe, and you can see that our marker is sitting at its normal height. So um, our supply is keeping up with this uh, rate of flow, so that's a good sign for starters. So we're not depleting our water supply to the point where we start taking on bubbles. Now we'll go up top and do a flow test. So here we are up top. I've locked out the reservoir with the off valve on that. So we're taking water directly from the ram pump, right out the valve here, and we'll take a flow check. I'll just count, and I'll review on the tape and get, take more precise calculations. 1,001, 1,002, 3, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010, 1,011, 1,012, 1,013, 1,014, 15,000, 16,000, 17,000, So my count may be off a little bit. It seems about the same. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll crunch the numbers um, when we get inside and do the video. <laughs> Are you trying to say something? What are you trying to say? Huh? Oh, okay. All right, here we are back at the valve. You can see I've added two more of these uh, nuts and then replaced our washer and top uh, nut. Uh, and it seems to be running smoothly like that. You can hear it's definitely lengthened that stroke significantly. And according to our supply gauge, we're still running just fine. So that uh, standpipe correction has made a massive, massive difference already. There was no way before I did that I could get that kind of water volume and not be taking air bubbles on set up like this with that many weights on. So now we'll actually get a chance to see how much water this pump can deliver. Uh, I'm going to try one more weight on there, I think, and see how it runs. Uh, and if that runs smooth, then we'll go up and take a flow check on that. Uh, Alright, so hang on. Okay, so you can see I've stacked it on. That's uh, four weights from default, and uh, three additional ones for this next volume test. Uh, we seem to have gotten a little bit more volume on the last test with a little bit more weight on. Now we're going to, uh, well, I'll show you this running first, and then we'll go take a test up top and see what our volume delivery is. You can hear the stroke is lengthened quite a bit again. 
And you can hear that valve is almost struggling to come up now. Which is good. And you can see our reservoir gauge is still running at a decent height. Uh, although I'm not seeing our purple tape as much, so that means we're actually starting to use our supply a bit. But uh, we'll go take a flow measurement and see what we get. So here we are up top again with all the weights on. I will do a flow test and we'll see. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010, 1,011, 1,012, 1,013, 1,014, 1,015, 1,016, 1,017, 1,018, Looks like it actually might have gone down a little bit. Um, it's hard to say without uh, the video editing software as a real precise measurement of the time. But uh, we will uh, we'll take a look at these results in the video editing software and then we'll go from there. Um, I have a suspicion though uh, with a new pressure chamber that's on the pump that that is part of the issue uh, because uh, some of the tennis balls were crushed I'll uh, throw a shot of that here when the uh, when the pump froze back in the winter. I've not replaced those, and uh, the new pressure chamber is nine feet long, so there's a lot more room for volume there, and I'm not sure we have that volume of air as a bladder. So uh, at some point, I'm going to do some upgrades on that, and we'll rerun these flow tests with the different weight sets, and we'll see uh, if there's any changes then. Okay, uh, and our final test will be with all of the weights off. And we'll just see what the flow rating is there. You'll notice the cycle is much higher in frequency. All right, let's go do a flow check. Okay, here we are up top, and uh, I'll do a count for this one. We'll also analyze the video. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four. 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010, 1,011, 1,012, 1,013, 1,014, 1,015. Oh, it's just about a gallon a minute with the weights off. So, it looks like the higher cycle, at least with the pressure chamber set like it is, uh, gives us more volume up top. So that's interesting, uh, and contrary to the Clemson.edu link that I did all my design work based on, uh, huh. well, at some point I'm going to do a video, I'm going to go over a uh, practical application of the RAM pump, uh, and we'll kind of go over the Clemson.edu link and the calculation stuff uh, to help people understand how to design and build a RAM pump from scratch to fit your scenario. For now, thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.